Hi everyone. I have something very special to share with you today. It's how I made this green screen for a 10 year old boy's birthday present. I want to go through the steps with you on how I did this and share with you some of the lessons that I've learned along the way. The first step is choosing your material. I've made this using quarter inch plexiglass. The reason I did it was for the bend that's where the sort of the wall meets the floor. I did this so that it would be smooth and seamless on the screen. This could also be achieved using joining two pieces of plywood together and then a bead of caulking that's acrylic and painted green. I have mail ordered a pneumatic spray painter, which if I was to make it over again, I would use plywood instead of the plexiglass for this. It would be so much easier. It's very, very tricky painting plastic. The second step is cutting the material to size. So I brought the 10 year old over to my home, brought the piece of plexiglass I owned outside and I showed him and asked him to point to me the size that he would like. So he chose roughly 28 inches by roughly 22 inches or in centimeters that's roughly 71 centimeters by about 51 centimeters. The third step is for assembling the green screen. So for plexiglass, it means using a heat gun to make the bend. If you're using plywood, you know, you'd be screwing it together, perhaps using some flanged insert nuts on the back, or you could also use furniture nuts. Both would work really well for an application like this. And then, as I said at the start, using a bead of acrylic um, caulking where the sort of the wall and the floor join together. The fourth step is sanding and preparing the surface to be primed. I'm going to tell you that this is the single most important step of this whole project, especially with dealing with plexiglass. There's only a handful of green aerosol spray cans available. So in all likelihood, you're going to find that you'll need to use a green latex paint. So that means you need to get a latex primer. Latex paint does not stick well to an oil-based primer. Remember, I've said that it will save you a lot of heartache. Again, you want to have a latex primer with a matching latex paint. Well, I'm thinking of it, an outdoor or exterior green latex paint is going to give you excellent durability, especially since something's going to be set on this as it's filmed. So preparing the plexiglass for painting, I would suggest using 80 grit sandpaper. It's going to make the plexiglass look like it's cloudy. It's going to take away the transparency. The primer needs that roughness of the surface 
to stick to it. Alternatively, I would also sand down a piece of plywood just, just quickly, just to make sure that you have a good, clean, oil-free surface. In either situation, after you're done sanding, make sure that you give it a very, very good cleaning. With the plexiglass, I actually took it in my shower and hosed it down to get all the little bits of plastic plexiglass that came off as it was sanded. For a wood version of this, you'd want to use a pneumatic air cleaner, or I suppose you could use what you use when you're wiping down your walls and windows at your home with a dust rag or an old pair of underwear or something like that. The next step is to apply the primer. I've mail ordered a pneumatic air spray tool. If I was to do this again, I would wait for it to arrive. How I had to apply the primer was with a paint roller. It was easy enough to do. The difference between spraying it and rolling it on is you're going to get a clean surface without the little bit of texture that a roller brings. It's something to think about. I've purchased the pneumatic air paint spray tool from an eBay seller in China, so it's costing all of 13 or 14 dollars Canadian. The trade-off, of course, is waiting five to six weeks for delivery in the scheme of things. And if you plan ahead, I think this is overcomable, especially since the equivalent tool sold locally is about $85. So you're roughly saving $60 by waiting six weeks. I prefer to have the money instead of giving it to someone else. It's the same basic tool, but when I'm buying from China, it's not gone through the six sets of hands that lands it in the store shelf locally. Each set of hands have to get paid, and it just keeps jacking the price up. After the primer is done, it's extremely important that you wait for the primer to properly cure. It's not going to be a two-day job making a green screen that's going to last. I mean, you can go ahead and put your green paint on before the primer's cured. It's going to come back to bite you. It's not going to have the longevity that waiting whatever the labeling says for it to cure and for that time to have passed. The green's going to eventually wear off sooner than if you had had the patience. So for me, this was a five to seven day wait. Next is to apply the green paint. This is the HTML color of the paint that I used. And what we did at the local hardware store was go to the different paint samples and matched the green, I printed off a square, and we found one that worked. And certainly the computer can accept it. The key is consistency and not choosing a shade of green that you're going to be wearing or that's going to be part of the material being sub, being filmed or photographed. I want to say that once more. The color that you use on your green screen can't be what's going to be used during the production of a video or photography. Otherwise, that part of it will have the background you select chroma keyed into it. After the green paint dries, it's back to another waiting stage. Now, this 
green screen has about six square feet of paint on either side. So it's not producing the same humidity level that it would be if you just bought a new house and were having all the rooms painted over a two or three day period. I used a fan to help speed up the curing process. So if you think about this logically, clothes dry faster on a windy day compared to a sunny day. So we want to get the latex, which is water-based, dried and cured. I used a fan constantly for a 60-hour period to help get the curing going. The next step I consider to be essential, although the staff at the local big box store will tell you their opinion is otherwise, and they do have valid reasons for it. I clear-coated the green screen for two reasons. One is the durability. So when it needs to be washed, you're washing off the dirt that's gathered on the clear coat instead of the green paint itself. The second reason, and this is really what sold me on clear coating it, was that it protects the color evenly or more evenly than if you were to just put your subjects being filmed or videotaped directly on the green. I felt that the money spent on a green screen clear coat is a solid investment and worth doing. You can put an oil-based paint over top of latex, but not vice versa. So the clear coat for this worked out really well. I want to remind you that you should use a flat clear coat so it's not reflecting the lighting because the green screen for all purposes is a video set or a film studio. You don't want the light reflecting back off of it. And there's lots of options for these at your local hardware store. Again, once the clear coat's applied, it's time to wait again for it to cure. And I certainly would want to encourage you to give those days of waiting for this to take place so and to make a solid product. So what you're looking at is roughly a two and a half week time frame from start to finish if you will allow the paint to cure between each coat. There are a few things that I would do differently. I've already spoke about using an air paint tool. There are different grades. I mean, there's a hobby grade that would also be appropriate for doing fingernails. The tool I mail ordered has a five centimeter or two inch spray width to it. That's good for a project like this. I was offered the use of what you would use to paint a room but the paint spray is much wider and the overspray would be very challenging to manage. So you want to pick your air tool appropriately and not be rushing for one or the other without doing your research and thinking about how big your green screen is going to be. Another thing that I would have done differently is I used 120 grit sandpaper when I roughed up the plexiglass. I would highly suggest you go a little bit lower. Why I'm bringing this up is there's been a little bit of paint chip off just the very edge. I want to help make this successful for you. The paint really does need the roughed up surface especially when you're doing plexiglass 
so that it will stick. And finally, I would also use a, a fan for when the primer was drying. I think it's a good investment because this is something this child could potentially use for the rest of his life. You know, when my air paint tool arrives, I'm going to make one for myself or to plywood. It will help me, especially with some of the the videos here when I'm presenting what I make. I think it's worth taking the time and doing it well. So, I want to close with this. I'm very grateful to the Patreon sponsors and the advertising revenue this channel makes me. It's the funds from these that let me give back to the community where I live. I want to do more with my channel over this next few years as I grow it and hopefully see it become my career. I wanted to let you know how I use the money. This channel is really about the do-it-yourself lifestyle. I find it very rewarding when parts of my life are extremely challenging. And I just want to extend my thanks to the people that do use my videos. I'm grateful that you welcomed me into your lives. Thank you so much for this time that you've spent with me today. Bye for now.